Cadets, today we are going to have a look at this service of Ship Operation Technology 2 for the present semester. This is our unit 1 deals with the plan maintenance system on board ship. In short, the plan maintenance system is called as PMS. It is a very very important this PMS which plays a vital role in maintaining the ships presently. So in those days, that is long long time ago, there was no plan maintenance system which was being maintained on board. This PMS came into force maybe after this uh, ISM, International Safety Management Code which came into force. They emphasized the importance of the PMS on board and this PMS plays a vital role in maintaining ship in an efficient way. So to face all sort of surveys, mandatory or statutory surveys, any time. And it helps you to keep the ship efficient for your post-state control inspection or your flat state control inspection. So let us see the reasons of the plan maintenance system. Why the plan maintenance system is required on board ship? The plan maintenance system, you can see, it reduces the maintenance cost. Guys, uh, you all will be aware, so you all will be having a two-wheeler, maybe your father will be having a four-wheeler at home. So if you don't do proper maintenance, let us see. If you don't do a proper maintenance, one day you're going for a long drive. If suddenly your car or your two-wheeler breaks down, what will you do? What will be your situation over that time? So can you imagine that? So you're going for a long drive and suddenly your car stopped. So break down, unable to start your car or move your car. So see that situation how it will be. Same like this, PMS plays there also. So if you have done the proper maintenance, so you will have a peaceful trip. So there is no need for you to worry about the, your vehicle. You can have a very pleasant drive. Whereas if you don't do a proper plan maintenance system, this breakdown will happen and uh, it will really affect all the uh, people's mood who are all into a pressure trip, you see. The same way, the reasons for the plan maintenance system is, so if suddenly if there is a breakdown, so the maintenance cost for that breakdown will be much much more high then compared to your plan maintenance system. If you have done your maintenance properly, as per the system recommendation, that is a short term maintenance, long term maintenance, whatever is it, is, a, is it a daily maintenance or it is a weekly maintenance or fortnight maintenance, whatever is it, if you plan everything and you have done it, your cost will not be Exorbitant. So this breakdown maintenance, you can prevent the breakdown. Breakdown maintenance, so many difficulties are there. You lose your time. You can lose your patience. A lot of stress builds in. A lot of stress comes into play because of this breakdown maintenance. And the cost to make the things alright again, it becomes much much higher. Since if you don't have a proper spares to do a maintenance, so the breakdown maintenance immediately you may require a spare. So that spare may cost more money compared to its normal price. So maybe due to a lot of other even transportation charges, or in case if you want to buy the things, you may ask for a quotation with four or five suppliers. So with that, we will try to get the 
lowest quotation, who are quoted the lowest, we will normally try to give the chance to procure the spas. So that's how the maintenance cost reduces if you do plan maintenance. If you plan your maintenance, you reduce the cost. And the reduced delays and interruption. There won't be any delay in case if you want to have a voyage, let us say a voyage which is from China to Brazil. So the voyage will be more than almost 20 days. So if you plan a voyage, there won't be any delay. You will have a peaceful, pleasant voyage without any interruption. Absolutely. You will have a peaceful voyage. And then it improves the quality of maintenance work, of course. The planned maintenance will improve the quality of the product, of the machineries. If you, the machinery which is supposed to run for let us say three years, due to the planned maintenance, the machinery which is which can come for, or the life of the machinery which is for three years, it can come for even five years. Okay? And it minimizes the idle time of maintenance workers. So the planned maintenance minimizes idle time of maintenance workers. How, how, how it happens? How it minimizes? So the regular maintenance will keep the workers engaged with the planned maintenance system. Either it may be daily maintenance or weekly maintenance, whatever it is. It will engage the workers. It will engage the workers in maintaining the missionaries or whatever is it on board. Whereas you break down maintenance, it makes the workers to work for a long time, creating your overwork and to give them a overtime also will be an issue later on as per your finance point of view. So, this planned maintenance it minimizes the ideal time of workers as well as it maximizes the efficient use of the work time as well as the material as well as the equipment. So, that is what I said uh, just uh, before. So, the equipment which can run for three years due to this plan maintenance, it can work even beyond the three years. It may give you a much more efficiency, thus reducing the cost of the repairs or spares for the replacement of it if you continue with the plan maintenance. And the same way, so the production of the or the efficiency or the result of the machinery will be increased if you do a plan maintenance. So the plan maintenance, as I said, can be divided into some phases. What are the phases? There are short term maintenance, long term maintenance as well as the maintenance due to operational requirements. So this is how the plant maintenance system which is on board as per your ISM requirement has been divided into three categories. So short term maintenance. So what is the short term maintenance? Maybe the short term maintenance includes your day to day maintenance, maybe day weekly maintenance, maybe fortnightly maintenance or maybe monthly maintenance. So these are the things which comes in the short term maintenance. Thus the long term maintenance may include three monthly maintenance, six monthly maintenance, yearly maintenance 
and maybe three area, five area maybe. So these are the things which comes under the long term maintenance. So let us see now a general plan maintenance schedule of a general cargo vessel. So that the cadets will have a bit idea about this maintenance. So the first, the plan maintenance schedule of a general cargo vessel, the short term maintenance. We are going to deal with the short term maintenance. It's a weekly inspection. So weekly inspection, what are the things you are supposed to do weekly? So these are the some uh, list of the workouts which are to be done weekly. So weekly inspection of the machineries, materials and weekly maybe greasing or oiling by lubricating the machineries for smooth running of the machineries. So what are we do? What are the weekly maintenance? So weekly inspections we now do with the winches, windlass, uh, so windlass, hatch covers, so the hinges of the mast house, these are the water tank those hinges which is a very very important part. So you should weekly check and you should make sure it freely moves. The reason for that is the water tightness, the water integrity of the water tank those should be maintained on the decks. So the hinges of the doors, desk stores and the ventilation flaps, ventilation flaps, some of the mast houses and even the cargo hold, ventilation system is there. There are different types of ventilation, so ventilators are there as you are aware of it. So these flaps, maybe of a flaps or maybe of a mushroom type ventilators, covers, so you have to inspect it weekly to make sure the free movement of this flaps or doors, whatever is it. So, and the cleats, cleats of the doors and this again deals with the water type doors. So the water type door, these cleats are the one which makes the door exactly watertight or weather tight, whatever is it. So make sure the cleats of the watertight doors are freely moving and as well as the cleats of the hatch covers which makes it weather tight. So these cleats also you have to Visually, you have to do an inspection if required. You may have to do some apply some grease to make it free. And anchor securing arrangements. Anchor securing arrangements means uh, it's nothing but uh, your bow stopper. Check the free movement of the bow stopper and check your Davis club. So and extra wire lashings. The Davis club means uh, you have to check. The inspection, you have to inspect the bottle screws, the free movement. If it is not moving free, you have to apply some grease or oil. So, lubrication basically plays a vital role in the strict inspection of short term maintenance. And booby hatches of the cargo holds. Again, same thing the booby hatch, which is the entrance to the cargo holds. The booby hatch covers to be checked for the free movement. The hinges of the booby hatch. Just check and check the condition of the booby hatch for uh, rubber packings. So these are the general inspections. And again, the booby hatches have a cleats. And just check the movement of the cleats of the booby hatches, whether it is freely moving. And then sounding pipes. Sounding any air pipes. So what do you check in this? Sounding pipes. Okay. Check general inspection and just open the cover and see whether the threads are in good condition. If the cover is not rotating properly, just apply some grease, remove the rust if it is anything. So this is the general inspection which you will have a look at the sounding pipes, air pipes. Air pipes general visual inspection regarding your rust. Okay, the formation of rust. And then just check the movement of the
flag which acts as a which prevents the entry of the maybe a uh, uh, fire okay which prevents which which acts as a uh, guard for the entrance of the spark okay guys so that is what the air pipes you will check and family rollers this is also a very important one maybe inspection check the movement of the family roller the roller should able to move freely then only the mooring ropes will not have will not be damaged so since every port you may have to use the mooring ropes to secure the ships to the jetty you may require these family rollers to rotate freely so this is also a very important daily inspection which you have to see just check the fittings of the rollers and the free movement of the rollers and the derrick keys so this us the list outs which comes under the fortnight inspection that is every maybe 15 days to the expense you have to do this so check the accommodation ladder and gangway accommodation ladder is the gangway just have a inspection check the movement of the maybe the bottom platform a uh, roller check the wire conditions wire rope condition check the uh, winch which is used for lowering and hoisting the gangway so these checks is very much required and then checks lifeboat falls and blocks check the lifeboat the falls blocks so when the lifeboat falls condition of the falls is very important check for any damage this life boat is one of the vital life saving appliances on board so check the lifeboat falls and blocks the block should be freely moving check the pulleys of the lifeboat or davits it should be rotating so these are the important checks which you are supposed to check for every fortnight as per the plan maintenance system there it per fire hydrants check the condition of your fire hydrant the fire hydrant whether the valve is freely moving or if there is any leakage of the water through the fire hydrants and the fire hydrants of what is the maintenance okay guys so if there is any leakage in the fire hydrants you may have to dismantle do the overhauling so all sort of these things has to be done because fire fire hydrant plays it is one of the very important fire fighting appliances on board which is to be maintained effectively which is to be ready kept ready 24 into 7 so you cannot bypass any of these things at fire hose box hinges the fire hoses which are kept in the fire hose boxes the hinges check the hinges the hinges is sometimes if it gets corroded or if it is uh, deteriorated you may have to change the fire hose box quick release gear on the bridge wings okay this bridge wings you have the van overboard life boy with the self activating smoke signal which is used when a man overboard and when a fellow overboard you have to release this life boy so the quick release system you have to check every fortnight whether the system is working properly when the system is in good condition satisfactory for its operation and general check all the life boys which are present on board a visual inspection whether it has a uh, the red or reflecting tape pasted and wherever is required whether it has a uh, buoyant lines or whether it has a uh, uh, self igniting lights attached whether the buoyant lines whether the safety lines which is fixed to the life boys in good condition so all these these are things checks that we for night and you are supposed to do and the security arrangements of the life raft check the security arrangement very important the check security arrangement should not be corroded check the validity of your hiu your life boat uh, life raft is secure by means of hiu right security release unit check the expiry date okay and then secure international shore connection security boards check the boards and check the condition of the boards of the 
international show couplings and quick steel hatch covers the rubber packings of the hatch covers check every uh, once in a fortnight check the condition of your hatch cover rubber packets and the wheels the rotating wheels of the hatch covers and the motors in case if you are using a mechanical hatch opening closing system check the motors check and check the oil pipelines condition of the oil pipelines and F, not only this you are supposed to check all the butterfly nets of all the doors the butterfly nets which also plays a important for ventilation system as well as your fire extinguishing system it also plays a vent flaps all the vent flaps around your accommodation area have a butterfly nets and even some of the booby hatch covers also have a butterfly nets so you have to check these butterfly nets the butterfly nets should be freely moving the butterfly should be freely moving so that you can make the completely you can bar the ventilation entering into the compartment so in case of a fire if you are able to close the ventilation flap and if you type the butterfly nuts you can make sure that no air enters the compartment thus the spreading of fire can be prevented or stopped so for this all these are very very important checks which you are supposed to carry out in a general cargo ship that's why we are just discussing it and the electric cables with deck lighting arrangements just check whether all the lights are burning or the uh, fittings of the lights are in good condition so these are the cables electric cable if there is any damage any opening out of the cable so all these things you have to do a check once in two weeks so with this we will finish this topic so we will continue with the next class thank you guys